Zero accounting software. Reconciliation reports. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in by holding control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175%. Zoom in, opening the demo, but doing so with the reset which will reset the data and open the demo at the same time. We're gonna duplicate a few tabs as we do every time to put our major financial statement reports in. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it. Going back to the middle tab, accounting drop down. We want the balance sheet report. As that's thinking, tab to the right, accounting drop down, income statement report. Back to the balance sheet, we're going to then change the date and bring it on up to 2022 and the end of it update. That's the setup process we've been doing every time, these being the major two financial statement reports. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Now we're looking at some other reports, most other reports giving added details to one or multiple line items on these major financial statement reports. I'm going to go to the tab to the right, right click again and duplicate again so that we can check out those new reports. Let's hit the accounting drop down, reports center, and we're going to scroll down to the reconciliation section. So when you hear reconciliation, the first thing that should generally come to mind would be the bank reconciliation reports. Now the bank reconciliation reports are a little bit different in nature to other types of reports because other reports when, are going to be created basically, if I go back to the first tab, when we enter the data in terms of bills, the forms, in terms of invoices that creates financial transactions that constructs both the income statement uh, the balance sheet and the subsidiary reports generally given more information about them. The bank reconciliation is a little bit different in that it's usually going to be or it is a reconciling item. It's tying out what we did on our side to what happened on the bank's side of things. So we'll get into that process in a lot more detail when we get into the bank reconciliation section. But just to touch on it basically as a report, the idea is that we want to match what we have on our side to what the bank has. It's one of the hugest internal controls that we can have. Now, note that when we think about that, you probably think first, well, that's very important for cash to make sure that our cash is uh, reconciled because cash is going to be quite important. We don't want to lose our money or anything like that. We want to be able to track it. But note that it's far more than that to, to make sure that we reconcile because as we can see, if I go back to the balance sheet, and we open up the cash account, which is a liability because it's overdrawn. That's why it's down here. Otherwise, it would be an asset. And then I'm going to go into that. Notice that there's more account types uh, going through cash than any other kind of account. Meaning if you if you look at accounts receivable transaction detail, there's only invoices increasing. And then we've received payments decrease in the accounts receivable. That's the same for all other accounts other than cash in that there's far more types of transactions that typically go through them. The cash account has a whole lot more because it's kind of like the lifeblood of the company. It's involved in every cycle. In other words, if I looked at the cycles here, we've been breaking out the cycles in terms of the expense cycle, purchases cycle, AP cycle, and then the revenue cycle or accounts receivable cycle, the employee cycle. Cash is clearly involved, interwoven, in all of those cycles. So if we can double check the cash transactions that are involved in every cycle, it doesn't give us a complete check on everything that happens in the accounting system, but it's one of the biggest internal controls we can have. The one internal control that we have is that we're using the zero software, allowing us to be in balance 
meaning that the assets equal the liabilities plus the equity and the software in essence forces that to happen. That provides a great level of confidence, uh, much more so than doing the books by hand and just having them kind of not tying out in terms of assets, liabilities and equities. And then second to that is really the bank reconciliation. So if you're not reconciling the bank, then you have a much lower kind of uh, verification that your that your numbers, not just cash, but all of the transactions, all of your accounts are accurate. And reconciliations are something that both small businesses and large businesses do. Now, the other thing to just consider with the bank reconciliation is that if you have the bank feeds on, you might think that you don't need to do a bank reconciliation. So if I go back to my flowchart, if you wait, for example, on the revenue side till something clears the bank and then you record it into the system, well, then you're using the bank in order to construct your books. So it's still important to do a bank reconciliation, but it will be far easier to do because you've constructed your books from the banks. So therefore, a bank reconciliation will basically be done by just constructing the books in and of themselves and then just double checking that you haven't doubled entered anything or that you haven't entered anything or not entered something from the bank. But if you have a full service accounting system, even if the bank feeds are within it, then you're still going to have some reconciliations generally because in that system, for example, you would be entering the invoices or the received payments yourselves and then checking them to the bank. Now, the act of checking them to the bank, matching them to the bank may still be helped with the bank feeds, but you're still going to have to actually go to the bank reconciliation and and double and, you know, do the actual reconciliation process and the number on your books will most likely not match what's on the banks because you didn't construct your books from the banks. You constructed them separately, tied them out to the bank, and there's usually timing differences. Even if you have electronic transfers, if you have a lot of them, there could be a difference on your side to the bank's side if, uh, if, you're, if you're doing a full service accounting system. And that's what the reconciliation will do. It'll tie out the bank's books to, to your books. And if you can get that out perfectly, then you have a pretty good internal control that everything is in the system correctly. So their bank reconciliation looks something like this. You got the balance in, in the zero software. So that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. So again, you can kind of think of it as a, a check on expanding on a component of the balance sheet, like many reports. But again, it's a little bit different for the bank reconciliation because it's an internal control. And then we've got the plus the outstanding payments, less the outstanding receipts. Those are usually the reconciling items. And then here we've got all this unreconciled statement lines because we, we need to do the reconciliation process, I believe is, is the issue here. But then it's gonna tie out to the statement balance, which should tie out to what's on the bank statement. And that's gonna be the general concept. We'll get into bank reconciliations more and actually construct a mock bank reconciliation in the practice part of the course or in another section or another course uh, that's when we get into that specifically, hopefully. So let's go back down and into the reports. And let's just take a look at some of the other reports in that section. If I scroll down, we've got the reconciliation. So we've got the, let's look at this one. We've got the bank summary. So if I go into the bank summary and I, and I take this for the year, let's go for the year, January, January through December. And it gives us a nice little summary down below. Opening balance, cash received, cash payments, and the closing balance. So that's kind of nice. You might be able to construct like some of these reports by using filtering options uh, from the balance sheet transaction type of reports. So if you want to detail on the cash, for example, you might go into like uh, your checking account and seeing if you could if you could filter it like by account. So if I went to the filtering options down here, I can I can filter it by uh, account type. The and then oftentimes you might look at like the source down here, which kind of labels the forms. And so you can you could and then you might be able to filter by the, the items that are the money in and the money out. So that's another way that you can 
uh, filter your your cash transactions, which is one of the types of accounts that you might want to, for various reasons, go into and look at the increases and the decreases and run different reports on it. But they've got this kind of nice little summary report here. Let's go back and check out some other ones in our accounting dropdown in the reports and go back on down to the reconcile. Let's let's take a look at the cash valuation customer report. Now I'll right click. I'm going to open it in a new tab. I'm going to right click and uh, open link in a new tab. So that's another kind of little tool we can use here to so I don't have to scroll back down every time and open it up. So there's this one and it gives us a summary down here. So I changed it to December 31st where it has what is the zero bank statement balance uh, user defined zero bank statement opening balance plus all imported bank statement transactions. So when you start thinking about the reconciliation uh, process, then it, within the system, you, you're going to have to when you if you could basically tie everything out, if you check everything off to the bank, then those are going to be your reconciled items. When we're thinking about the, you know, the reconciled balances versus those that are unreconciled bank sta statement transactions, how well do bank statement transactions reconcile to accounting transactions? So the bank statement receipts not reconciled to accounting transactions, total statement periods not reconciled to accounting transactions, count of all bank statement transactions not reconciled. So they give you kind of some nice information that might might help you out to determine how clean the books are in terms of bank reconciliation. Because remember, if I'm if I'm looking this up from an accountant standpoint and someone gives me their books and says, you know, if, do you have any faith in these books being accurate? One, the fact that they're using accounting software like zero gives me confidence. Number two is, are they reconciling? If they're not, my confidence level is going to go way down. So these might give you some information on, you know, on the reconciliation components of them. And if you're taking on like a new company file and trying to figure out what's going on, that might be a useful tool in that case, for example. So reconciliation reports, let's, I'm going to right click and open this one in a new link. Now this is another report that you don't see oftentimes in a lot of different kinds of accounting software like a QuickBooks. So let's explore around this one a bit. You got the drop down up here, trial balance, aged receivable, aged payable, saving uh, accounts, reconciliation, checking, and so on. So we'll keep it on the trial balance for now. I'm going to change the date, bringing it up to 2022, let's say 2022 and then update. And then you've got your trial balance, which is kind of interesting the way it's laid out here, because usually you would think it would be the balance sheet on top of the income statement, but they got the income statement on top of the balance sheet uh, type of accounts here. So that's kind of interesting. And and uh, and then they've got the activity debits and credits and then the year to date. So remember the trial balance in general is basically all of the accounts that are used to construct the balance sheet uh, and the income statement, but you don't have all the subtotals involved on the trial balance, so it can be a useful tool to be using. So then these activities is kind of, I'm going to go into this activity to look at the detail here and scroll down. So it's given us the information from December 1st through December 31st. So it's given us the months uh, type of activity. I'm going to go back. So, so I choose, I chose here, not a range, but one uh, date as of December 31st. And then if I go into this activity, it's given me the activity for the last month. And then this stuff is the year to date activity, which you would expect then this to tie out to what's on the income statement because these are temporary accounts. So that 30,623.86 is going to tie out to the, the, uh, tr the income statement. 30,623.86. So that makes sense. You would expect that for like the advertising would be a debit of the 10 four. So that looks good. And then you've got, I believe the month activity over here. And then the balance sheet is assets, liabilities and equities. So these are the permanent accounts. So the 917263 should tie out to what's on the balance sheet. So let's go back onto the balance sheet and scroll down it's thinking it's thinking still so that looks right so that makes sense and then if i go back on over this is the activity 
Now, the activity is just for the month, it looks like. So if I go into this activity and look at the detail, it's giving us the activity. It's got November or it's just December activity. So it gives us the month's activity and then we can expand the range in that activity here if we so choose. And so that is the, the assets, same with the liabilities and then the retained earnings. So interesting reconciliation report. We have some other kind of uh, an aged receivable report, which looks kind of like a normal kind of receivable, but the current balance, November to October, September and older. So similar to a normal receivable uh aging report for the most part here although you might be able to do some more drilling down on the numbers here let's go to a drop down payable savings checking sales tax fixed asset general ledger the general journal report let's take a look at that the journal report let's go from january 2022 to December 2022 and update so then we got the computer equipment office equipment so these look like the the items that are have been entered with possibly not just a form but a journal entry in other words, normally we enter transactions by hitting the drop down and we enter it using a form and that enters the journal entry in terms of debits and credits, the accounts affected. But you might, if you don't have a form to enter, enter directly just a, a journal entry with the debits and credits directly and possibly this will help you to kind of sort that around. So those are uh, some of the reconciliation reports. We'll continue with more reports next time.